few specters. Hello. We're playing PSO version 2 on the Sega Dreamcast. And we're gonna go online. I haven't made a video on Dreamcast Online in, uh, I don't know, what, like two weeks or so? And that's because, a couple of reasons. First reason is I started working again. I basically was not working between April and July with the whole quarantine and the furlough and just being unemployed, basically. But I'm back to working, so I have a little less time. And also, as far as Sega Dreamcast goes, I got it online in April, so I spent the first few months just playing it all the time, and I, you know, I got a feel for basically every single game, except for baseball. And actually, I can see there's someone online playing baseball right now. It's not often you see that. I think that's like one of the only baseball and Pod Speed Zone are the only two games that I haven't played. Oh, and Gundam. I haven't played Gundam, but I'm also not really interested in games like Gundam, so that's kind of... I burned a copy of it, but I'm, I don't know. I'm not, like, eager to try it out. So, but since I got a feel of all the games, I kind of just log on when I'm playing, like, a few games. Like, mainly just PSO, Maximum Pool, Alien Front Online, 4x4 Evolution. Those are pretty much my four favorite games to play online on the Dreamcast. And if you notice, I actually did not mention Quake 3 Arena. And I've mentioned it in other videos that, you know, as someone who loved playing Quake 1 as a kid on the PC, even Quake 3, I had Quake 2 on the N64, and I had Quake 3 on the PC, and I used to play that online. And, you know, I like Quake. I, I got no complaints of Quake. I mean, Quake 4, I didn't like. I remember that was a three, Xbox 360 launch title. I did not. Uh, I, I wasn't. I wasn't into that. I wish I could play with these guys. What's the password, man? Let me check the Discord real quick. Maybe they, they're in the Discord and they're like, hey, password is over here. Uh, let's check the silver in Discord. Oh shit, they're all in voice chat. I don't want to join the voice chat just because I would if I wasn't recording, but then I gotta like kind of ask for their permission, and uh, I don't feel like doing that right now. Damn. Uh, back out. All right, so uh, we're gonna make a team. Just call it V Hard. I've uploaded videos on Quake 3 Arena, and two of the I uploaded three videos on Quake 3 Arena. Two of them, uh, you can hear people talking in the Discord, and I remember I asked each of them like for their permission. I was like, guys, I'm gonna stream. I'm gonna upload a video. Do you mind if I capture your your voice? And they all agreed to it. Uh, I remember I felt really weird asking them that, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? And, uh, whatever. They were all super chill and they didn't care. Hey, Lee's joining me. Good, good. I need I need a buddy. And uh, my third video I uploaded on Quake 3, you know, the more recent one. I, I didn't join the, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to join the Discord because when I join the Discord, there's so many people talking and then, like, I don't even get to say much. And I kind of want to talk to you guys and, you know, tell you what I'm thinking about the game and whatnot. Oops, oh, don't tell me you meant to join another room. Let's go to, uh, I don't know. Don't tell me he's leaving. Don't tell me he's leaving. Don't leave. Oh, you fucking motherfucker. He's leaving. Alright, so I'm going to ruins. But yeah, my main problem with Quake 3 Arena is the uh, the fact that it's only four players. And it's just pretty much just free-for-all everyone plays. And there's really not any option. I mean, 
it was 2v2 capture the flag but you know it's just 2v2 so when i play fps games i like when there's like objectives like king of the hill or like when one team has to like plant the bomb and the other team has to like defend the bomb and defuse it okay to what what do you want to do I'm in the ruins. I'm down to okay. The 30 FPS also doesn't help with Dreamcast, but uh, it's not the biggest problem. It's mainly just the fact that it's only four players. And uh, there's been a bit of a drought lately when it comes to uh, video game news. The, there's so much of a drought that I'm actually like been really curious about the Intellivision Amico. And if you're unfamiliar with that, Intellivision is actually making a brand new console. And uh, so is Atari. They're all, Atari is also making a new console, but after I did a bunch of research on it, I'm not really too interested in the Atari console because it's it's kind of just like a low-end PC. It's not really a video game console. But the Intellivision Amico actually does feel like an, a video game console. And the fact that it has like actually exclusive games that are coming to it. It's not just like a PC where you can just customize it and do whatever the hell you want with it. I mean, the Atari console is basically the OUYA. OUYA 2.0. It's basically what it is. But the new Earthworm Jim game is coming exclusively to the Intellivision Amico. Which I find that interesting because what the hell does Earthworm Jim have to do with television? They're, you know what I mean? But whatever. Still cool though. And I was initially actually like very interested in the Amico, but there's a couple of things about it that I turned me off to it but tomorrow they're gonna there's gonna be like a big reveal big trailer they're gonna announce a bunch of like features of it and games and just basically this big trailer is coming tomorrow so I'm, I'm interested in that but my big turnoffs were the fact that it's like it's like between 250 and 300 dollars and that seems very expensive for a console that's basically just a bunch of they're on par with like mobile games you know what i mean like this is a console that's less powerful than the switch basically and it's mostly just going to be like remastered or remade or re re-envisioned whatever word you want to use in television games like classic and television games and i mean shit like the fact that it's so expensive and at first, I thought it was going to have online multiplayer, but now it might not have online multiplayer. And if you know me, I just I'm a big online gamer, so that's if it's not going to have any any online multiplayer ever, I, I don't think I'm going to buy it. I think that would be like my the biggest turnoff for me, like being able to play old re-envisioned television, classic and television games online with people. That's kind of what turned me on from the beginning. But it does have some cool features like the Intellivision Amico it comes with two built-in, I mean not built-in, two controllers packaged in. But if you have like a third player or a fourth player, um, you can get the, them to download the Amico app on their phone and they can use their phone as a controller, like the touchscreen. So you gotta hand it to them, that's pretty awesome. Like you can't, you can't really shit on them for that. That's actually pretty innovative and consumer friendly and all that. Like, it's cool. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to watch that trailer tomorrow whenever it comes out and we'll see, man. I don't know. But uh, ever since I found out that no online multiplayer, I am pretty uh, turned off by the whole thing. 
And it was supposed to come out October 20th, uh, 2020. But there's rumors that it's going to get delayed to April of 2021. And I think that's extremely dangerous. But I guess they have no choice than to delay it because I think they're having trouble with the whole virus. They're having trouble buying components. I mean, even Nintendo was having trouble manufacturing switches. And I mean, the Intellivision Amico, I, I mean, it's something that should have came out towards the end of 2019, honestly. Like that would have been the perfect time for it to come out. But now, like, I don't know, holiday 2020, which it's gonna get delayed to April probably. Like shit, man, the new Xbox coming out, the new PlayStation's coming out. I'm sure the Switch has some pretty awesome games coming out for the holiday season. I don't know, man. I just don't know. I don't think it's a good time. And as we learned from Sega, the time that a console gets released, no matter how good the games are, no matter how innovative it is, no matter how great the console is, the time it gets released is critical to the success of a console. I wish them luck, but I just don't know. Wow, this guy's doing a shit ton of damage. With the spread needle. Wow, what are the stats on that beast? Hey man, if he's this strong, we should have just did a TTF. We could just we could do like a we could do a TTF in like 14 minutes with this guy. But I think he said he was looking for a monster part. You know what? If he's going to be knocking everything out, I'm going to pull out my gun. I need to tag some shit. Or I'll use my Rafoe. I'll do both. Dude, this guy, this guy's gun is ridiculous. I mean, the fact that it's a spread and it's doing that much damage is what's really interesting to me. Dude, he must have, like... I mean, first of all, that's already max grindage, whatever the number is. But it also... That's gun, that gun has to have, like, at least, like... Like, 50% in dark? Minimum? Minimum? And he must have, like, a sh like four god powers equipped or something? I don't know. But actually, you know what? I, what do I know about this version? This is Dreamcast version. I don't know. He could have like all his, he could have a shit ton of power materials used as well. I actually maxed out on hit material, which is crazy. Like, I don't know what it is about this game, but I seem to find, I was, I was finding hit materials more than any material. And I found a hit material recently and I don't think I was able to even use it. So I think I might be maxed out on ATA. I'm going to die. Look, there it is. Yellow. See, ATA, I'm just maxed out on it. Damn, I need some better gear. I need some more god powers. And I need more power materials. I feel like power materials are like the rarest material for me at least. I'm sure it's just RNG. But man, I definitely need more power materials. And I do have a god power equipped too. That's that's actually kind of even what makes it more pathetic. Oh, elf arm. See, you know what it is? I bet if I unequip that. And then I use my whatever hit. I gotta go to the bank. Maybe, maybe I don't know if I dropped it or if I put it in the bank. But if I just th this is a waste having this. As long as I just you know have enough hit materials maxed out, 
I could take this off and put another god power on. That would be the that's the that's the plan. That is the plan. Oh, I didn't realize this, but he also has Shifta. Oh, what, what am I doing? Why am I not? Let's 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 yeah, turn around. Just mm. This is like the shittiest like sword the shittiest rare sword in the game. Oh, he's using uh whatever the fuck. God hand or something. I don't know if God hand is an episode two weapon, but he's using one of those uh knuckle weapons where it's basically he's just using his hands. Tag it all. Dude, use your spread needle, man. I I, I don't mind it. He's got that uh flame garment, I think it's called. Pretty cool armor. I know the PSO Episode 2 version has the Aura Field, which is basically the same armor, but it's blue instead of orange. It looks pretty cool. And I think the the max the, the, the required level is like 152 for that armor. It's pretty intense. I have one on my on my characters. Cool, you want to hear a fun fact? My very first time ever finding a rare item was back here on the GameCube version when I was like 10 years old. One of these boxes, I found an ad slot. Yep, good times. So maybe you guys have heard about Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis, and I made a video talking about that too. And as somebody who did not enjoy PSO2, I'm pretty optimistic for the new game because it's a new game. It's basically PSO3, but it takes place in within the, the, the same universe as PSO2. It takes place a thousand years basically after the events of PSO2. And the reason why I'm optimistic for it, even though I didn't like PSO2, is because since it's a brand new game, it's not like we're going to have like eight years worth of backed up content shoved down our throats and we're just going to be confused. Because I feel like that was a big problem with PSO2, is like there was just so much shit at once. Like the game was out in Japan in 2012, so you know they had eight years worth of updates that we got all at once, it was just too much. Sensory overload, mad menus and shit. Too, way too much and I know what it's like to play games when they're first out and then watch them grow as content gets updated to them and I think that's the best way to really experience a game like I know that like when you come into a game years after like usually this applies to like MMOs mostly like MMOs on the PC like I know I remember playing MapleStory I don't know if you've heard of MapleStory but I played MapleStory in like 2004 and I, I didn't, I was like addicted, I would play on and off until like 2008, but I mean, I, I, going into MapleStory now in 2020, I mean, it's a fucking totally different game and it just turns me off. My camera was like kind of not aligned. But uh, we're back. I'm back to being kind of in the middle. Wow, we got some more players. You know what? Let's refresh the silver and thing. Eight hunters online. Bullshit. There's more. There it is. Twelve hunters online.
Camus DC. Yo, what up? And look, there's a hit material, and it's grayed out. I'll pick it up. Cool. Why can't I pick it up? Oh my god, don't D Am I about to DC? There we go. So yeah, I should collect these hit materials and then I can, you know, unequip that elf arm I got. And I can, uh... I don't know what the hell I can put there. Whatever power I have, that's the next highest. Because that god power I got, it was it was a gift from somebody. And my other PSO, my latest PSO video, my previous PSO video, you can actually... I think it was someone named Amelia that gave it to me. I think it's Gen 6 Gamer. I think that's his... That's his internet, like, alias. <sighs> what I've been playing a lot of lately is uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, a new one. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, God, fucking, it's the same fucking game every year. And uh, only brain dead fucking motherfuckers play that game. And it's a real shame that Call of Duty has earned, and I'll, I'll say the word earned because they really have earned it, that sort of, like, disrespect. Because, I mean, think of all the COD games there are. There must be like 18 different CODs, and maybe like only five or six of them are good games. Like a third of them are good. So, it's not unwarranted. But I gotta hand it to him for this one. You know, my favorite Call of Duty will always be Call of Duty 5 World at War. And usually when I when you play a Call of Duty game, you know, you play it for like a few months or like maybe even like five months. But then you kind of just stop playing it and then you move on to other games. But it's August now and I'm still playing this game. So it's got to be doing something right. And a lot of people seem to feel this way. Like it's a frustrating game at times. Like it's got some problems. But dude, it's fucking August and the game is still being played by lots of people. So... It's the first COD in a, in a while that has done so good. Alright, I'm just going to use this shit because I can't even use my rest of when I want to. Oh, these guys are so annoying too. Dude, break out your spread needle and just fuck them up. Dude, that spread needle has ridiculous range. And another plus, a huge plus with the Call of Duty that's recent, the new Call of Duty, is that it has cross play, cross, uh, cross platform. Uh, play so I got friends on PC. I got friends on PS4 and it's the first Call of Duty since like high school where uh, we're, we, I can play with all my friends at the same time because you know all my friends we all had 360 back in high school and we play World at War and Modern Warfare 2 But we all kind of like moved, went our separate ways in terms of what consoles we got next So the fact that we're it's like the fact that we're all playing again like back in high school together is pretty much the biggest like selling point of the game. Oh, is this thing just gonna follow me? State maintenance though, coming through. This isn't the right way, is it?
It doesn't look like he wants to come this way. I always kind of assumed if you if there's like a, ever a door where you need to stand on switches to get through that it's not the right way to go. I'm not sure if I'm right on that. What is he saying, man? Did he just have a stroke? Is he doing okay over there? Whoops, caps lock. Let's hit these switches. Ah, they're one of those kinds of switches. So this isn't the right way to go either, if I need to stand on four switches. 13,000 XP, so close, I'm getting there. Go back to the warp. And let's go north. Let's check out that door. It looks like it's open. Ah. Wait a minute. So that door needs two people for the switches. That door I need four people for the switches. So what the hell? Am I just am I just screwed? Uh, I think I am. I don't I, that doesn't make sense. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like there's nothing I could do there. I need another person to stand on that switch. So let's go back to the lobby and try to join another team. Hopefully there's like at least a hard mode game going on. If there's an ultimate game with no password, I don't mind to hang out hang out, even though I won't be helping much. So what else have I doing gaming wise? I'm looking forward to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, the remastered version, which is coming to Switch. And it's gonna have online multiplayer. Oh my god, it's the same rooms. I'm like tempted on just like doing a B-Hard TTF by myself. Like, kinda just, I really wanna get to level 100. Like, bad. Uh, uh, fuck it, I'll make another room, be hard, and I'll just, I'll just, I'll just run through the forest. 
But yeah, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is going to have an online mode, four player. It's an action RPG, four player, kind of like little chibi characters. Um, I mean, I played the one on DS, I thought it was cool. And this is a remastered version of the GameCube. So, and it has a really cool feature. And this is like a huge selling point for the game. If you have friends that have a Switch, is there's basically like a demo version of the game that you can download for free. And it gives you access to like three of the 12 dungeons. And if, if I have the full game and someone else has the demo, they, I can actually play online together with them. We can, they can, I can create a room or join with them or they can do matchmaking, whatever. And what's even more cool, let's say I just download the demo for free and my friend downloads the demo for free. We can both still play online together. So that's really cool. So all my friends that have Switches can basically, you know, play online with me. But the, 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 the pro of having at least one player that has a full game is you have access to all the dungeons. So if I have the full game, my friend has a demo, he can play all the dungeons with me. Uh, I just, I think there, you know, he can't play the full game still. I think there are some things he can't do. I don't think he could fight the final boss, for instance. But you just have like so much of the game for free and it's just really cool. I mean, it's awesome. The 51 Classic Clubhouse games has a feature similar to that, but the demo doesn't have online multiplayer. So if you want to, if I have the full game and my friend has the demo, we can only play the game locally. Like he has to, you know, be in the same room as me, but no online. So Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles demo is extremely generous. Like you really, like I said, like you don't have to buy the game at all. You could just play the demo and you can with other people that have the demo online, but you can only play three dungeons. Still pretty cool. But it's one of those games where you, where you, you know, you level up, you gain experience, you can grind, you hunt for gear. I mean, it's almost like, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's, I mean, it's similar to PSO. You know, it's not, it's, it's different, obviously, but it just has some similarities. You know what, I bet any East Coast players are probably just not playing the game too much uh, PSL I'm talking about because there's a hurricane right now and most of my friends don't even have power right now. So I'm extremely lucky that I have power and internet. I have a friend literally that's just two blocks. I mean, you know, Steve. He, he, he also makes content for this channel. He has no power right now. Like, it's fucked. I think I'll be a high, I think I'll hit level 100 at the end of this forest run. Maybe, maybe. Just gotta kill every monster I see. Man, forest just makes me feel so strong. You know, it makes me feel like I got a huge dick in between my legs. Cause ruins. I mean, even. I'm. I mean, I'm. I can beat ruins by myself. I've done it before offline, but it's just not easy. Whoa, five of them.
sorry that I couldn't get like a full game going with all these people. I'm kind of by myself. It's kind of boring. But sometimes it's like that when you're playing PSO on the Dreamcast, man. Like it's just there's either there's gonna be people playing on a difficulty that you just either can't play on or don't want to play on. Like it's actually amazing. Like there's been times when I go online, like in the past when I was a lower level, where it's just all ultimate rooms, all of them ultimate rooms. So there'll be like four rooms up, they're all ultimate, and I can't even play with them because I'm not even level 80 yet. And now I go online and. <laughs> It's one ultimate room that has a password on it, and two normal rooms, so it's... You just gotta, like, be lucky. I mean, that's just what happens. Pretty sure the exit is behind me, but I want to kill as many monsters as I can. So let's go over here. Oh, wait. I started over here. Okay. And yeah, I skipped the boxes, man. I mean, I just don't ever find anything good. I guess there's like a chance that I could get a power material. But... I don't know, man. The boxes are just tedious as fuck for me sometimes. If I was playing in ultimate mode, I'd probably open all these boxes. Oh, I picked up a Resta level 11. I should use it. That's another thing that is interesting about the Dreamcast version is that I can even use Resta level 11. Like, Genki version, Humars could only use up to level 10 discs. And Humars couldn't even do shift end to band in the Genki version. Humars were pretty useless. In the Genki version, you were almost always better off using either a Huna Whirl or a um, Q Cast. I mean, even the Huna Whirl. I think there was a problem with the Huna Whirl where you couldn't max out the stats or some shit. It was always like you're if you're gonna make a hunter, you just you're really like you're supposed to just make the the robot, the cast. PSO is just one of those games that, and I, I always thought this way, even back when I was 11 years old playing on the GameCube, and I had found out that the Dreamcast version had online, and that even the, that the fact that it even existed at all, I was I always just think, even as a 12 year old in 2004, like I wish I played this game when it first came out, and like I would love to play this game, like I would if, if I could just somehow like start my life over and be born like I don't know like five years earlier I was born in 92 so if I could just somehow be around for the Dreamcast and have it and, and play PSO when it first comes out you know version 1 get my character like level whatever 100 or 90 or whatever and then version 2 comes out like six months later and then I play that and then the game is just you know, you have ultimate mode, you have challenge mode, battle mode, you have level 30 discs. I mean, I, I mean, that just must have been so cool back then. I was thinking actually about making a video talking about this topic, but I just think it's such a random topic that like why why would I make a video on this? But I've always thought like, let's say I was born in like, I don't know, let's say 1980 and I had got to, to experience every generation as first came out. Like what console would I pick? Like which consoles would I stay away from? 
and I'm just going to talk about it now because, I don't know, I, I, I'm just, it's just an interesting topic to me, to me, as weird as that is, but like, let's just start with the NES, like, 100% would get an NES, I mean, there's so many games like Super Mario Bros. 2 and 3, Zelda 1 and 2, and 2, I have to emphasize that because I, I really was a big fan of Zelda 2. And, um, there's other games that I really liked on the NES, like Super C, which is basically just Contra 2, and Contra 1 as, as well. Uh, I liked playing Donkey Kong Jr. a lot when I was a kid, because I did have an NES as a kid, but we got the NES when I, in like 95 or so, 90, maybe probably 96. So we got it late, but to me, you know, it was new to me as a four-year-old. What are the games on the NES that I like to play? Oh, we had Ninja Gaiden, but I never was very good at that game at all. Uh, I remember... We had the Goonies 2, which I never got very far in that game either. What else did we have? We had Kung Fu Heroes. That was a really cute game. That was always fun to play two-player. But uh, yeah, the NES 100% would get that. I would steer clear from the Master System. But for the 16-bit era, I would 100% get a Sega Genesis. And I would definitely get the power base converter peripheral, which lets you play Master System games. And I would definitely get Fantasy Star 1 and some of the Wonder Boy games. Or Monster, were they called Monster Boy or Wonder Boy? There's other, a couple of other Master System games I would get. And uh, But it's really probably like less than five Master System games that I'd be interested in. But I would also definitely get the Super Nintendo, 100%. Definitely got to get, you know, the Final Fantasy games and Super Mario World and Super Mario All-Stars and Contra 3. Probably not a big fan of Super Mario Kart. Uh, what other Super Nintendo games would I have been interested in? My mind's kind of drawing a blank. Oh, Donkey Kong Country. All three Donkey Kong Country games I would have to get. Well, at least definitely the first two Donkey Kong Country games. So it's going to be... That's already a pretty expensive generation for me. Like, I better have a job as a fucking 12-year-old where I have a Genesis and a Super Nintendo. Like, I'd be fucking some rich kid over here. So let's just say, you know, instead of being born in 1980, I'd be, I was born in 1975. Because then at least I'd be 16, I could probably have some part-time job where I could save up money. So 1975, I could afford all this stuff. And honestly, the generation after this is where it would be really complicated because I don't, I don't think I'd buy the Sega CD. I don't think I'd buy the Sega 32X. And I guess as, as far as launch is concerned, I would not get the Virtual Boy. But I have heard rumors that the Virtual Boy, like a year after its release, when they were just trying to sh like clear their shelves of it, that you were able to get a Virtual Boy for like 40 bucks. I'd probably buy it then, because I do like the Virtual Boy. I think there's like, I think out of the 11 games that were released in, the, in, the, in, the, in North America, like actually like five of them are actually pretty good. So I would buy the Virtual Boy if I could get it cheap used. But now we go into the N64, PS1, and Sega Saturn era, and like I can't have all three. Like you know what I mean? Like how much money do I am I gonna have? And it's complicated. It's really complicated to really pick. I can't I can't not have an N64. I just don't see how that would be possible. I mean, but I got to take my age into consideration. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, because if I was born in 1975, I would be 20 years old. I don't know. I, I, I You know what? I, I, I No, I gotta have the N64. I really do. I gotta have Super Mario 64. I gotta have Super Mario 64. I gotta have Super Mario 64. I gotta have Super Smash Brothers. I gotta have Donkey Kong 64. 
Star Fox 64, Mario Kart 64. Doom 64 was really good. There's just too many good games there. GoldenEye was not bad. I mean, people love that game. Banjo-Kazooie, I can't forget Banjo-Kazooie. There's, there's a lot of great exclusives on the N64, so I'd have to get that. And the PS1 is another console that I'd have to get. I would have to get... I don't know... If I, you know what? I have to have all three. I have to have the Saturn too. But you know what? I'll be honest. When it comes to the Saturn, I would definitely wait on that. There's no way I would buy that at launch. No way. 400 bucks, not happening. I'd buy the Saturn when, if I could get it used. I've heard of someone on the Sega Saturn Shiro podcast. You can look them up on YouTube. They're like a whole podcast dedicated to like Sat the Saturn. Really interesting and a really cool group of characters. They're all really chill. And uh, one of them told in like, I think the first episode of the podcast, he mentioned how, I think it was, he said it was 97 or 98 when he got his Saturn. And he was able to buy a Saturn used for 40 bucks. So, fuck it. If, if I can get a, sat, a used Saturn for 40 bucks in 97 or 98, uh, definitely will 100% jump on that. And I definitely would want the Netlink modem to play online. But I hear the modem was 200 bucks when it first came out. Or around that price, maybe even more. So it's really expensive just for a peripheral. That's extremely expensive. Then who knows how much it costs per month to dial up. But I would want the fuck out of that. I mean, playing Duke Nukem 3D and w would have been al alone. Would w was I mean, playing Duke Nukem 3D online on the Saturn is what made me want to get my Saturn online. And I did get my Saturn online. You can see my Saturn in the back right there with the Netlink modem attached, and uh, I have a bunch of videos of me playing Sega Saturn online. Actually, just last week I was able to connect with somebody in the UK. And I'm in New York, in the United States, so you're not really supposed to be able to do long distance with the Saturn because it, it just lags so bad. And to be honest, we like a few of the games we actually just straight up couldn't get it working. But Sega Rally we were able to get it working, and it was like virtually like no lag. There was like a couple of lag spikes. You can watch the video on my channel. And uh, it ran really good, so that was impressive. And the Sega Saturn, they had chat. You could go in like the net. It's called like the Netlink Zone. You could browse the internet on your Sega Saturn. You could go into chat rooms and talk to people. I actually heard of uh, couples meeting. Couples that are married to this day that have met in Sega Saturn chat rooms. <laughs> Isn't that insane? So yeah, I'd buy the N64 at launch. The PS1, I would probably wait until either Crash Bandicoot or Spyro came out and then buy it then. Sega Saturn, I'll buy it after a couple of years of it coming out, where I can get it cheap for used, uh, get it used cheap. And uh, as far as the next generation, I mean, I'm definitely buying a Dreamcast. Dreamcast is another one of those consoles that I guess, I don't know if I'd buy it at launch. I don't know, because I heard that uh, Choo Choo Rocket, which is the first online game on the Dreamcast, didn't come out till February, or did it come out till like sometime next, uh, the year after, because it launched in September 99. Online didn't even start working until the year 2000, so I'd probably wait a little bit. I don't, not that I'd, I'd get it cheaper by waiting a little bit, I, I don't think so, but I mean, maybe, w weren't, wasn't there a point in the Sega Dreamcast like life cycle where you could basically get a Dreamcast for free if you did some sort of $200 rebate thing with the online something like that I don't know I probably uh, wait a little bit with the Dreamcast but would definitely get it right away uh, not right away but I would definitely get it and play the shit out of it the PS2 I would not buy I don't think I'm missing out on too much with PS2. But the GameCube, again, is something that, yeah, I would buy because 
I know the GameCube just had so many good Sega games com coming to it when the Dreamcast stopped its production. And the original Xbox, um, I guess I would get it. I mean, the PS2 is the only one that I wouldn't really be going crazy all over. I think if you have a GameCube and an Xbox, you're pretty much you're pretty much set. Because I was never really big of a fan of uh, Jack and Dexter. I was never a big fan of Ratchet and Clank. I would miss playing Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal's awesome. But as far as PS2 is concerned, I don't think there was any really good like Crash Bandicoot games or Spyro games on PS2. I know that PS2 had the SOCOM games because I remember I used to go to my friend's house when I was like 10 years back in like you know the early 2000s and watch him play PS2 online and he had his headset and everything. Level 100. My material. I guess I'll pick it up. But uh, I guess I might as well use it, right? Because in this in this version, there is no uh, cap, level cap. I mean, there's no like cap the amount of materials that you can use, like in all the future versions of PSO. Oh, we got two people playing PBA bowling. Bob Dobbs. Bob Dobbs. Oh, Bob Dobbs loves bowling. And you know what? I like that game too, but I just suck at it. But I'm not a hater. It's kind of like a chill game, like how Maximum Pool is a super chill game. Alright, let's go in the lobby and see what the hell people are up to. There it is, two normal games, one ultimate with a password. Alright guys, that's it. Level 100. I've done it. This must be like my 15th character that I've gotten over level 100 across all the versions of PSO that I've played since 2003. So uh, that's it guys. I'm going to turn on my Dreamcast and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.